Hey everybody, Tommy from BrickNerd here, here to talk about motion control. I've had a lot of questions about my motion control system, so I thought I'd just do a video to talk about it. Uh, what this is, is what, what I'm calling the NerdFlex. Uh, this was a strange name, I understand. Uh, what it is, is an homage to uh, the Dijkstraflex, the original camera built for Star Wars A New Hope back in like 1975, 6 to do all that stuff. It was a kind of a, well, it was a brand new thing then. Um, and at its simplest form, well, it's called a NerdFlex because uh, Dijkstraflex and Brick Nerd. Yeah, it's dumb, okay. At its most basic form, uh, motion control is basically a way of incrementally controlling one of these, a stepper motor. A stepper motor is uh, different from a regular motor or a DC motor or an AC motor as well. Something that just continually spins or, or, or ramps up based on voltage. What these do are turn a number of steps based on how many pulses you send to it. And uh, that allows for exceptionally fine control. What this does is interface between Dragon Frame software and these. That's really all it does. Um, what I'm doing here is actually nothing new or groundbreaking. Uh, it's just my way of packaging existing technology. Uh, how it works is inside here, there's one of these. This is an Arduino, Arduino Uno. Uh, this is a microcontroller. And really all it is is a very open and uh, flexible way of controlling things. All these little pins here on the side are either in or out and either analog or digital, on off or they can be controlled through uh, PCM, pulse cool modulation. Uh, this is what actually connects to the computer through the uh, USB. Um, these pins can be configured however you want them and this is what you call the shield. This connects on top of here, and all it really does is basically take all these pins and route them in a way that's nice and convenient to these, which are stepper motor controllers. So, this goes on top of here, and three or four of these go on top of here. This is a CNC shield. It's actually designed to be used for uh, CNC machining. So you've got an X, Y, and Z axis, and sometimes the z-axis is the one that goes up and down, or z-axis as in the UK. Um, the z sometimes has two screws on it, on each side. Well, sometimes it's just one, sometimes it's two. So generally speaking, the fourth axis here is just a second z motor to go up and down. But through software configuration, because this thing just runs on a little bit of code uh, called a sketch, uh, you can break out this fourth one and control four channels. So this goes on top of here and be sure you get the right pins correctly in there. And then four of these will go on top of here and that just connects it. So what this is just basically a bridge between the Arduino and this. And all the Arduino is is a bridge between your computer and these. So that's really, it's pretty simple in its theory. Getting all the pieces to work together can be a bit of a challenge, I'll tell you that. Uh, some other things to consider is on the CNC shield, there are jumpers that you can put in here and that can control the micro-stepping. Normally on a stepper motor, the steps, it's got a certain number of steps that's based, based on the motor. When you look at the specs for the motor, you'll see what they are. Um, they can be kind of crude. And if you look on here, if you if you've turned it, you can feel when it's moving between the, the larger steps on there. Uh, that's just the one-to-one -one stepping. Uh, with micro-stepping you can divide that and that uses variable amounts of voltage between the steps to move the, the, the shaft between those two. So if you do it by half you get suddenly twice the resolution. Uh, you can also do quarter, eighth, sixteenth, and up to thirty-two I believe. Maybe even higher depending on your controller. I've never done anything more than a sixteenth and even that I I'm debating because when you microstep, you have a trade-off between 
uh, the resolution of the motor and the torque, the holding torque of the motor. That's one of the problems that we've had here. And I'm still, I should say, this is still a prototype. The original prototype is here. And this is what we shot the uh, the Lego Life thing with, which uh, that was a pretty complex thing. And that's, this was actually specifically built for that because there was no other way of doing it. It didn't require like a really expensive motion control rental or even more expensive uh, custom controlled or custom built stuff. Uh, so that's really what I did is I just started from scratch and said I can do this myself and I built an entire motion control system just to do that spot. But I made it forward looking and flexible enough that we can use it for anything. Basically anything you can control with one of these, you can control with this and Dragon Frame software. And it's all set through splines and plays back automatically. So if you step back, if you want to delete some frames, the system will automatically redo it, reset itself. So um, to actually talk about the Lego Life spot and how you can control these things, it's all depending on how you mount it. This particular one is actually the the motor that was used for the turntable of the Lego Life, the big structure sitting there. Um, what I did is I just took, I made a giant turntable. I bought the biggest lazy suits as I, lazy Susan I can get, about that big. And I took plywood and I mounted it to it and then cut a big circle out. And then I took timing belt and basically turned that big wheel into a giant gear that I can control with this motor. And that allows us to spin the structure. And in addition to that, I built a, a system that you can use for, for tracks to move the dolly back and forth. And on top of that was my breadboard dolly with this connected to it. And this is a Ditto Gear Omni Slider, which is a monster, but very durable, very heavy, very dependable. And then connected to that as well was this. And this is a Dynamic Perception Stage R, which is a pan tilt head. So this is pan, this is tilt. You have to imagine there's a camera here. I could have it on there, but then what do I shoot with? So, um, and that was this was actually mounted straight up and down, so that the camera could go up and down, pan, tilt, and then in addition to that, whenever you're getting closer or further away, you need to focus. So I built this thing to go onto one of the rails of the camera, and this meshes with the gear that's on the the, the focus, and this is a little tiny stepper motor that you can control the focus. So, all total, we had in and out up and down, pan, tilt, focus, rotation on the, uh, the turntable, and I th think that was it. So six axes. Uh, this was controlling the up and down, this was on its own controller, this was the pan and tilt, it's got its own controller, and this controlled everything else, and including the, the really big, I mean the, the dolly tracks were as long as this room. So uh, it was because the structure was so big, we had to get really far back to get to the shots that we needed. So it was a, a challenging setup. Uh, let's see. Another thing, um, well, let's just talk about the, all the, the different aspects of it here. This is a monster. It's really heavy. It's hard to set up and hard to move around. This is also heavy. So between the two of those, this is really best for like really big setups. Um, but sometimes you just need a little bit of movement and that's why I built this. This is a 20 by 40 extruded rail from Open Builds. Uh, one of their, this is actually the whole thing came partially as a kit from their linear actuator uh, kit. So it comes with the rail, uh, this, this little bracket on the end with a r idler pulley, this bracket for a NEMA 17 motor, the uh, belt goes through and it goes actually through the uh, extrusion and all I did was mount a tripod to it or a little ball mount to it and then connect to the bottom another plate to the bottom so this can be actually connected to a tripod so you can put it at any angle you want wherever you want it. I also designed these legs in Fusion 360, printed them out in 3D and it's got these little feet that I picked up at Lowe's. So I got a whole little mini slider with you know a foot of throw which in macro photography which is what brick filming is that's uh 
a lot. This is a big move, amount of movement, and most of the moves we're doing are just these little six to eight inch moves, so it's perfect for that little thing. And this is what I control with that. Um, this, I have to admit, is a little disappointing. There's uh, a lot of slot between the planetary gears, which allow for a heck of a lot of torque, but also between that and the belt system that controls it. So by the time it gets from this motion in here, through this, through the belt, through this little turntable and back up to here, there's just a little bit of slop in it, a little bit of backlash. Same thing on the pan. Um, that amount, while it seems small here, in fact you can barely see it moving, uh, when you're that close on little tiny Lego figures, it becomes a massive amount. And while Dragon Frame has tools in it to compensate for backlash, I have yet on multiple, multiple attempts been able to set it up so that I get a re repeatable move. So generally when we have a big move with a big pan tilt, um, it's, we go into it kind of scared because we know that it's kind of one shot we're going to go through. If we need to back up, it's probably not going to line up again. We're going to have either a hitch in the move or more, more work in comp to fix, smooth it out. So I'm probably going to design my own system soon enough here. Something that could, small that could fit on here. Um, I also need to get a, a, a move camera, uh, something I can do with a boom. If I could put a little system on here with an arm that I could suspend a camera on, pan tilt on that, uh, that would be ideal, and uh, I just don't have the time or the resources to design it, but I'll put it on my someday list. So let's break it down again. So you've got Dragon Frame software, um, you've got the Arduino inside here, and there's a sketch, the software that runs on an Arduino, that comes with Dragon Frame called DF Moco. Uh, that has to be modified a little bit. And I, it's been so long, I don't remember the specifics of it, so I won't leave them here. But um, you have to modify it basically so the, the pinouts so that uh, you can control that fourth axis. And um, I think there's one other thing that needed to be adjusted. So it doesn't work like right out of the box, I don't believe. We're gonna require a little bit of work first. But um, you make some changes in the, in the, the sketch, upload it, and it'll work again. Um, so, DF Moco on there, CNC shield, four drivers, step, step a micro stepping set, however you want to set it. Um, an important thing to re remember: the voltage. This actually powers the Arduino, and since it requires a connection through USB to actually send the, the instructions back and forth, there's no reason for power to the Arduino. This is basically there to to allow you to provide voltage, so you don't have to have it connected to a computer. The Arduino is so flexible and powerful that you can do so an infinite amount of things with it, um, including things that don't have to be connected to a computer. They just have power running through there. The power that runs into this is actually a separate connector. In fact, you can't even see where the Arduino power is connected there because I've recessed it and made it hidden so that you don't accidentally send the voltage. Through. This is actually set up right now for 12 volts, um, two amps. I'm gonna experiment now. I just got a 24 volt um, power adapter and I'm gonna experiment with 24 volts depending on the stepper mode. This one's actually rated to go to 24. Um, and I think between that and if I adjust my micro steps, I can get a little more torque out of it. Right now this will work pretty much you know, about to this angle, but if I need it to actually have the holding torque to work up you know, this way, it doesn't have it and it'll start losing steps or even like collapse. And any stepper motor will give up if you turn it hard enough, there's only so much that it can do holding against that magnetic force in there. Even this, I had to build a counterweight system when this was rigged vertically with all this and the camera and the, uh, the focus, all the stuff that was attached to it, it was too much for this thing to, to hold. So I designed a, uh, a 3D counterweight system, which I don't have right here, that sits on top of this, that connects down to the stage and it has a 10 pound bag, a sandbag that could counterweight it to making this effectively weightless to the uh, to this system. Uh, where was I? So upload the sketch, modify it, and then these here are, I use aeronautic connections. Um, I like these because they, they've got four pins, which is what you run, is what you're running into the, the, the stepper motor. You see there's four wires on these, they're bipolar. 
I think that's right. Um, there's four wires in here, which allows them to keep completely separate from each other. And then these connect into here and actually have a little ring so that you can pause it. It's got a key on there, so it only goes in one way. And then you can actually attach this the little sleeve on there and that's not going anywhere. Um, there are other ways to do this. I, I went with this. I've kind of experimented with using a Cat5 cable to do it. It might work. I've just yet to come up with a way that I can put on the stepper motor and the back end. Still looking for that mystery piece that's got a Cat5 in and a, like a pigtail out that I can connect with the, to the stepper motor. If I find that, I might make that connection. But this is just four females in the case and they're connected straight into the board on these little connectors on the side here. Bang, 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 bang. And uh, that just takes the place. You could actually take this motor with the, the connections that are usually standard with these things, plug it right in, straight into here. But this allows it to be completely flexible. I can have this connected, I can have this connected, I can have this connected. The dolly things on its own motors. Or you can have one specific thing set up for one task. You can custom build it. I mean, you could put anything you could attach this motor to, uh, a Lego turntable or whatever, um, you can control it with uh, stop motion animation and motion control. So, I probably left you with more questions than I've answered, but uh, uh, I hope that's uh, a good overview for what this system is. Um, I have no plans to sell it. Um, well, I've tossed around the idea of a Kickstarter, but uh, at this point, I uh, have no immediate plans to sell the system. Um, and also, all of this is going to be completely open source. Even if I do end up selling these, I'm going to publish everything so that you can do it. I don't know if I can share the DFMoco code. Um, it's just modif their modified version of it, but I might be modifying that code. If somebody out there is really good with Arduino coding and wants to help me out on this, I would certainly appreciate it because there's stuff in there that is just going right over my head. I'm by no means a software or hardware or any kind of engineer. I'm just a guy who would like to make stupid cool movies and uh, sometimes I need to make tools to do that. So uh, that's the system. Hope you found it interesting or informative. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. See you later.